Askarov almost completely tapped on man in this situation. If Walrix and FedEx can keep up this pressure, they can definitely turn this game around. Full leg sweep now on Anixi and Jamie. Nice double stun from FedEx to slow them down and get some pressure. Innervate out for Asgarath, so that's going to allow him to toss out as many heals as he wants as it reduces all of his spells by basically 100%. Gets free healing there, so ultra important that Lone Tar pushes in, tries to dispel that off, but unfortunately not able to find it. And Asgarath, because of that, is able to stabilize his team. Look at Asgarath so far away, and this is Prowl as a Druid. He's, he's slightly invisible to us, but completely invisible to his opponents. He does get denied on the drink. Good awareness by Walrix. They have to at least keep the mana even. Tempo Storm make a swap. They pull more defense from FedEx. Lone Tar and Walrix lock down. Triple crowd control. Tempo Storm look to close in game number one as they continue the chain. If Nixie can stay on target, FedEx is keeping him off of Walrix. Good backup by FedEx as he tries to go aggressive and makes a swap to Nixie. Nixie preempts the situation, trades efficiently to stay aggressive. Asgrass should take this opportunity to drink. They've got group therapy pinned down at this point. They can't push forward. Walrix moves up. Is he going to be able to stop it? I'm curious where Asgaroth is at this time. Everything rides on him. If he can regenerate mana moving into dampening, it's more than surely his match. Walrix sees it, denies it again. Really good drink awareness by Walrix. They cannot allow that battle to be lost. It's the only thing they've got going because the pressure is so much more in favor of Tempo Storm. Nixie secures crowd control. FedEx gets stunned. It looks good again. And Tempo Storm have been in the driver's seat start to finish. Lontar is doing whatever he can for his team, but Walrix gets crowd controlled out of the spirit link, and that's more than enough to close the game out. Tempo Storm. Looking fresh in game number one. Group therapy with a composition. I trying to figure it out. Trying to actually navigate their way deeper into the tournament. Tempo Storm draws first blood this Friday, and they're going to to keep on rolling. Group therapy with a nice map pick here. Ashamane's fall, perfect for a Shadow Priest Warlock combination. I'm curious to see how Zot performs. He's very prominent in the Warcraft PvP community, always creating educational content to help new players out, and he's always at the top of the ladder. But a tournament situation is a lot different than ladder play and I'm really curious to see how his debut is here today because if they lose this series they're eliminated from the tournament so everything may rely on him to carry the team yeah he's just sitting back putting out dots trying to put out as much pressure as possible Walrix though taking most of the damage earthen shield totem does get dropped out by Lone Tar to prevent some of that damage you can see as Garath he's gonna be pushing in as well gets the double stun onto Walrix onto Lone Tar looking for a cyclone but nice life grip from Zot will free him up Curious here. Temple Storms is dealing devastation throughout this series as Walrix and Zot are constantly under fire. Asgroth isn't really feeling that heat as we see Tempo Storm retreat back behind the pillar to avoid the attack of Walrix and Zot. You will now see Zot and Walrix likely split up. Zot here towards the right side of Jamie and Asgroth and Walrix on the left. This way, always one member of the team can attack. Nixie with a late spell reflect, taking a chaos bolt, but then reversing the pressure and forcing a disperse. Both teams going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Nixie forced to retreat and pull back. This is where we need to see Zot and Walrix split up. They're both running the same direction. If they both run the same direction, it's very easy to avoid line of sight. Now they've managed to split up. Nixie actually decides to just charge forward. Reckless abandon into the fight to get a kill. Already Lone Tar with a significant mana lead, but damage is following through. Walrix is trying to counter pressure. Lone Tar denies the kill, but they're still going after it. Asgroth tries to cross midfield. Walrix denies him, but they manage to break it up with a Tremor Totem. There's a silence denying a Cyclone. Good silence by Zot, but Nixie keeps the chain going for the team. This is great teamwork by Tempo Storm to get this crowd control chain. It's actually forced Lone Tar to use his Gladiator's Medallion to break, whoa, whoa. but it may not even be enough. Zot's just getting hammered. Walrix can't get Nixie off his back. Walrix needs to do more damage now. Yeah, Zot needs to use that Vampiric Embrace to help out Lone Tar just a little bit, but he's holding on to it, trying to just stay alive, trying to play in the open, and that's so Walrix can actually get some counter pressure, get some damage out. We look at mana once again, Asgaroth way behind compared to Lone Tar, but Temple Storm, they could easily close out the game with the way this pacing is going. Lone Tar gets a win here. Now Zot going uh, for uh, some additional damage here, getting into Void form. Nixie could be in some trouble, still caught in the midfield with a spell lock on Jamie and Fear on Asgaroth. Nicely done by Walrix, setting up his team. Zot follows it up with the silence because he's not in that much trouble zot is the one might have to use his void shift here and swap his health with his teammate i, I think it's likely to have to happen if he gets interrupted he won't be able to he's being Whoa. greedy oh close call for zot just right at the last possible second makes the trade nixie finally getting counter pressure walrix ripping in Found another late spell reflect by nixie he cannot afford to keep spell reflecting after the chaos bolt is cast but zot is still taking it lone Char denies the kill for a couple seconds with his earthen wall totem that dusty cloud that dusty circle 
reduces damage to anyone standing inside of it. Activated by Lone Tar, but now fading. Azot retreats away, trying to drag Nixie out in the open, but a Hex is secured by Jamie. Tempo Storm's crowd control has been on points, even though they're heavily behind on mana. If they keep their crowd control going on Lone Tar, Zot is running out of cooldowns, and the next chain could easily close the game. Nixie sees that. They have to go for it because Asgard doesn't have any mana. Nixie initiates. They need damage here, and now if they want to take Zot out, they don't have anything left. Asgaroth keeps the chain going. They need more. Feral Affinity, Asgaroth trying to add to the fight as well. Is it going to be enough? Spearling Totem available. May be needed right now as Lontar drops it and makes the trade. He knows he's got the lead. Just a better decision to make a cooldown trade now and try to counter pressure. But even still, Nixie and Jamie are going at it. Yeah, Zot's still in a lot of trouble. Almost in execute range. He has the gateway. They haven't used it just yet. Might want to consider using that, but no, gets into Void Form. A lot of pressure now on Jamie. Silence on Asgaroth, who is completely out of mana. He has nothing left. Group therapy, they just have to stay alive a little bit longer, prevent Asgaroth from drinking, and I think they got this in the bag. They've got Tempo Storm in a chokehold. Asgaroth has no mana remaining. He cannot cast any significant healing spells. They're pinned down behind the pillar as three members. Walrix and Zot have them completely surrounded. Any angle, they're going to close this match. Asgaroth has Innervate. All his spells are free for a couple seconds seconds will that couple of seconds be enough for him to stabilize and counter aggress it would be an absolute miracle but so far it's allowing him at least to hold on they initiate some crowd control they've got an eight second window to kill zot six more seconds to kill zot i don't think they've got the damage to do it walrix is just raining down terror perfect map selection great positioning excellent execution as group theory clo group therapy closes <laughs> game two that's the walrix we wanted to see and man i'm having fun with desert of tolver on. We will find out momentarily here because Trademark Lone Tar's mana was significantly superior in that last match. He's really showcasing that Restoration Shaman to a level that we haven't had the opportunity to see yet this season, and I'm curious to see how it plays out for the rest of the match Match here because this composition that Group Therapy have crafted, the Destruction Warlock and the Shadow Priest may quite possibly be one of the strongest in the game currently. Yeah, definitely really good at taxing healers, man, especially the Restoration Druid having to keep multiple heal over time effects on on lots of different targets and that definitely adds up and becomes expensive. You can see Asgroth he's going to be using that Innervate immediately as he puts his heal over time effects on multiple targets. So he just wants to get that uh, healing re or the sorry that mana reduction cooldown rolling so he can get some free healing on his team. And so it'll be available again. If he uses Innervate right away in the game, gets a ton of expensive free heals, there's an opportunity three minutes later that he can do it again. So that's smart Innervate usage by Asgroth to be mana efficient to try and outdo Lone Tar. Asgroth crossing mid field. Very dangerous to do with both Zot and Walrix on his way, but he's managed to sneak across. Lontar preemptively had a cap totem on the ground, interrupting the chain, but no, the Infernal was one second too late. Misplay on Walrix's part. Now he has to trade a huge defensive cooldown just to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and they can't afford to make mistakes like that. That was a costly trade. Asgoroth's aggressive push paid off. Yep, they are happy to get that unending resolve from Walrex. Pull behind the pillar, allow Asgaroth some time to top off his team. Jamie throwing in a lightning lasso just to control Zot a little bit in this situation. Not really using it for too much pressure, but just wants to avoid damage at all costs. And now, Temple Storm, they're in a great spot. The next time that Asgaroth, he has his bash up, he can push in, looking for a Cyclone once again. And Walrex, Zot, they have to make sure they stop that so Walrex can stay alive. I'll say there's a significant difference in terms of target selection. Tempo Storm in the last game went after Zot. In this game, they're going after Walrix. And by going after Walrix, they stop Chaos Bolt, one of the hardest hitting attacks in the game, which is why we don't see Tempo Storm's health spiking nearly as much. However, Walrex takes a lot less damage than the Shadow Priest, so they can't really build momentum. Tempo Storm need to find opportunities to switch targets, find an opening, because Lone Tar has such a huge mana advantage in this specific case. Lone Tar's crossing map to deny any sorts of drinks. That Fell Hunter attacking Asgaroth will deny combat drop as well. Group Therapy have Tempo Storm in a chokehold. I think they're going to need to craft a different composition moving forward. It's, it's really up to Asgaroth. His crowd control earlier in the match. Oh, beautiful Psychic Scream right as Asgaroth tried to jump jump across the map. Zot intercepts. He's still trying to go for it. Lone Tar moves in midfield, so Walrix can at least back him up on this. Life grip Lone Tar out of range of Cyclone, but Nixie's there to follow the chain instead, but they're just getting hammered. Walrix doing so much damage. You can't leave either of these members open. Both Zot and Walrix are just tearing in. Look at Tempo Storm's health. Asgaroth's already down at half mana, and he just can't recover. Yeah, this is the problem. Anytime Asgaroth, he pushes in, looking for crowd control. He just gets counter crowd controlled himself. 
Jamie has to trade out the Astral Shift as he's getting lower. Asgroth trinket it out as well. Walrock's still low, though. Nixie doing a lot of damage. Nicely done. Lone Tar sitting in the back, trying to top him off with his Ascendance into a Storm Bolt, though. Walrock's still dipping dangerously low. If we look, Temple Storm, they are falling behind. Group Therapy, they are fully stable, and this is not looking good for Temple Storm. That Innervate that Asgroth used at the start of the game means that he can use it right here when he probably absolutely needs it. Look how critical his mana is. These regrows, he should have Innervated on these casts. He's spending way too much mana. Mana. Now he activates it, but it may have been just a second too late. You have to be so efficient with your mana in this specific patch. And now Nixie's getting hammered. He's just trying to soak up Chaos Bolts with defensive stance that reduces damage by 20%. He's kind of just the bullet taker for the team in this specific case. He's just soaking up as much damage as he can, whereas Asgroth and Jamie don't have that defense. And he's doing a decent job so far, but aggressively, they just don't have anything going for them. There's so much defense still available for group therapy. If Zot and Walvrix can split up again, put the Shadow Priest on the left side of Asgaroth, put Walrix on the right side of Asgaroth, deny this drink, they have to stop this drink, Asgaroth currently sitting a little bit too far away, Lone Tar is trying to trade, they have to race the drink, Zot moves in, but he's overextended, at least they stop it, but he managed to get some mana, Walrix is now trying to start something and, and close this match, double Mortal Coil, where are the Chaos Bolts, he's looking for one, gets stopped by Jamie, they have to avoid these Chaos Bolts at all costs, while Infernals are rolling, they deal with significantly more damage, Walrix gets denied on another, manages to finally get one. Can he get another is the question. Two Chaos Bolts for Walrix. They're leaving him open. He's going after Askaroth in midfield. Askaroth ducks back around the corner, but now Nixie left out in the open field as Walrix tears in. More Chaos Bolts flying. Temple Storm may have enough mana to keep this going, but not for much longer. Yeah, definitely not. When Askaroth went for a drink, Lone Tar did the same thing, except he got to sit and chug all the way to full. Now Lone Tar comfortably sitting in the back line once again, going to be able to top off his team. Nixie goes in, lands the full fear. Some damage over onto Zot, but Zot retreating, trying to get that VT on multiple targets. It's really important that Nixie and Jamie, they're constantly interrupting Zot, but like we kind of talked about, if they're just non-stop interrupting Zot, that allows Walrix. He gets to spam out Chaos, well, he gets to spam out Fears, and that's just going to be so disruptive for Temple Storm. I mean, look at Asgross mana. Nixie's left in midfield, but if he has to keep casting Regrowth, that's one of the most expensive heals the Restoration Druid has, but it's, he needs to. The damage is too high for anything else to suffice as we see Tempo Storm starting to dwindle down in health and mana. Dampening just kicked in. They need an absolute miracle at this point to find a kill. The entire defensive lineup available for group therapy. Utter domination here in game number three. I thought Tempo Storm was going to close this out based on Walrus' performance on Balance Druid, but now that he's back on this Destruction Warlock, he is raining down terror. Nixie barely hangs on. Asgaroth sets up for what needs to be the kill, but they've got so much defense, it would be a complete throwaway. Walrix denies it. No, Jamie keeps it going. Nixie is the one that's still low. Zot manages to trade efficiently. Dispersion denies the kill while Lone Tar sat through that crowd control. Tempo Storm finally starting to crack the wall. That is group therapy, but it might not be enough. Asgaroth still totally tapped on mana. 7% dampening. Chaos Bolt's flying in at this point as Tempo Storm scrambled to get a kill. Yeah, Asgroth, look at him. He's running into the corner, looking for a drink. Manages to sit down. Walrix has to shut him down. Does he find the Cataclysm? Yes, he does. Asgroth caught in stealth. Now still with no mana. Into a full fear. Jamie and Nixie, they're just going to be rotting down. Group Therapy, they have so many defensives left at their disposal. Lone Tar does drop out the Earthen Shield totem for Zot. Vampire can break. Oh. Rolling, and it is just a matter of time. Nixie getting lower. Disarm onto look Asgroth. Into a full stun. Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt coming in from Walrix. They just need to stay alive and continue to do as much damage as they can. Can. Shadow Fury secured onto two members of Tempo Storm. You cannot leave Walrix open. Lone Tar breaks out of that crowd control to keep his team going. He's got them in a chokehold, but he's actually almost tapped on mana. Suddenly, this might be an even game if Asgaroth can manage to scrape his health of his team back. Asgaroth jumps in, maybe for a bash to try and win the game. Lone Tar repositions. They uh -oh. catch him out in midfield while he tried to cross. He doesn't have mana to heal that back. He's just going to be at low health probably for the rest of the game at this point. He's not going to be able to get aggressive, and that's critical. This Fell Hunter keeping him in combat. Walrix doing a great job micromanaging the pets. Asgroth not dropping combat. Nixie is just going down. And at this point, Group Therapy have complete control of the match. Nixie tries to carry maybe in the final seconds. They're not even attacking Zot. Nixie's on a different target. He's just bladestorming in midfield like a ballerina that's about to explode at this point. There's nothing left for the team of Tempo Storm. Chaos Bolt's raining in. One more closes it. Nixie holds on by a thread, but it's not enough as Group Therapy are starting to come back in this series. Utter domination. A ballerina with a sword, he is able to take advantage of it. Here, they look to close the book on this series and take the first win of the day. The gates are now open.
Yeah, we'll have to see what Jamie and Nixie can get done. Asgroth's going to be charging in once again, looking for some crowd control. Looks like Zot is going to be the target of choice, but like we kind of talked about, that, that's going to leave Walrix free. Right away, Zot's taking a whole bunch of bursts of the Stormbolt onto Lone Tar. Good initial aggression here by Temple Storm. Asgroth shadow melded Walrix Mortal Coil, broke up the chain, and was able to get aggressive and maybe get a kill in the first second of the match. Sick play by Asgroth. That pulls them a void shift. That's the strongest defensive cooldown for the Shadow Priest. They may even get more off the back of that sick play. Asgaroth is getting more aggressive in this matchup, and that's what he needs to do. He's losing on mana. He needs to get in their face with the Feral Affinity, deal more damage, get more crowd control, but still avoid death at the same time. Everything rides on Asgaroth for Tempo Storm as they face elimination. Yeah, Nixie getting low does have the Iron Bark preventing some of that damage now. Stun onto Lone Star, and you can tell Tempo Storm, they realize they have to get aggressive, but Asgaroth may have overstayed his welcome. Bark Skin and Iron Bark going to be used, as well as the Die by the Sword by Whoa. Nixie. Zot, in the meantime, getting low as well. He still has the Dispersion playing it a little bit greedy there, but ultimately survives from a huge heal coming in from Lone Tar playing in the back. Asgroth is weaving in and out of cat form a lot better in this match. He needs to at least get some damage for his team to get a kill against the defensive group therapy, but it's so difficult with Walrix just looking at him, just eyeing him every second he's out in the open. Hey, I got a Chaos Bolt for you. Asgroth has to do the most difficult task of avoiding death and executing just a tiny bit of extra damage for his team. If they want to find a kill here, they're already behind on mana as group therapy they look unshaken from that initial attack even though they traded the most powerful defensive they have not overlapped anything from that point asgroth jumps into the fight walrix intercepts him immediately walrix has to be the goalkeeper for his team to deny this cat form asgroth from building momentum lontar sits through a lot of crowd control nixie tries to dish out the pain during that moment but it doesn't even seem to be like enough as we see him getting counter pressured away asgroth jumps into the fight it whoa, might whoa, just be whoa. enough amazing damage output this game just the tiniest bit extra from Asgaroth. He still has a difficult task to try and keep his team alive whilst adding this extra damage. Can he do it? Yeah, well, honestly, Asgroth has been doing such a tremendous job, honestly, making group therapy panic during this game. Now a silence on Asgroth. He has to shrink it out as Nixie is getting a little bit low. Both teams playing hyper-aggressive here. Group therapy, they have to hold on a little bit longer. Nice tremor drop by Lontar on the heroic leap. Intimidating shout coming in from Nixie. Very nice plays. Walrix, he's definitely an excellent goalkeeper, keeping Jamie and Asgroth locked down. But Nixie is just soloing Zot. They want to stay in this tournament. This is a completely different tempo storm here in game four. It's Zot barely barely staying alive and it may not even be enough he will fall and this looks like a completely different matchup when Askarov gets aggressive he took the risks but it's gonna pay off that pick we don't see blades edge often it's very chaotic but it's perfect for destruction warlock they want to get Asgroff out in the open on the top of the bridge and just tear him apart can Asgroff carry the team he's kicked up the aggression he's gonna jump right into the opposing team and be the initiator as tons of damage perfect thunderstorm Zot's knocked far away from his team Team. Warwick deflects the kill for now. Bit of a panicked moment, but Zot starts to stabilize. Yeah, Zot, he had to use the Psychic Core on the Nixie to try to slow him down just a little bit. Zot just not able to get any damage rolling, and that's really good about this Look strategy. Look at this damage! He's getting lower. Dispersion is forced as well. With the Intimidation oh. on the Lone Star. Beautiful Cyclone and Temple Storm. Oh. This aggression is just destroying group therapy. They're falling apart. They're trading cooldown after cooldown, but they do catch Asgard. Oh. This is why they picked the map, was to go after him. He needs to be able to juggle both offense and defense. Sneaking under the bridge for a second, but now they switch their attention to Jamie. This is the disadvantage on Blades Edge. They have to duck for cover downstairs, but even still quivering under the pressure of Walrix. He's going to jump down, chase after them. Zot on the upside is trying to still get pressure. They've managed to restabilize. Bit of a close call for Tempo Storm, but if they can get it back together and get aggressive, they could just close it out. And they need a stun for Zot. No stun available. It still may just be a void shift with just damage alone. Spiriling Totem from Lone Tar. The most defense we've seen pulled from Group Therapy. Therapy all on Asgaroth's shoulders as he takes a very big risk on Restoration Druid. Feral Affinity is probably the most difficult thing you can play, but he gets caught in the fear. There's no Tremor Totem. Jamie's all alone upstairs. Nixie is exposed. Walrix is carrying. This map was perfect for Group Therapy as they swing back. Yeah, Nixie's still low. Asgaroth has to play catch up. Barkskin does get used as well as the die by the sword, but that fades. Nixie's still so vulnerable in this situation. Lone Tar, I think he's been drawing out some purges in this matchup as well, just trying to get some semblance of counter pressure. Both teams having to play aggressive, don't want to fall behind on mana, but also want to keep up the aggression. Asgroth now caught into a 
Spear does get tremored out. It actually just breaks. Jamie still has the tremor totem available if he needs it. Still good pressure for the group therapy. Nixie getting lower. Mortal Coil onto Jamie and Asgaroth. Nixie all alone. Beautiful spell effect on that Chaos Bolt, but that's oh! just made. Almost in death range. Lots of damage still incoming from group therapy. Everybody on Tempo Storm is dying. It's their tournament lives on the line as Walrix looks to close this game out. Jamie's out of range. He can't get Asgaroth out of that fear. They still have some pressure, though. Zod gets bursted down. He needs to trade. He trades Fade. He actually fades the incoming Maledict of Jamie, immuning that incoming healing absorb. Nice play by Zot. Great execution by Walrix. Really up this game throughout this series, putting the team on his back, utilizing this map perfectly. Asgross out in midfield. Everybody getting torn apart here. Maybe an opportunity, though, as both Zot and Jamie dip low. It's match point. Either player could fall. Zot makes the trade. Jamie doesn't really have that luxury. He's just holding on by a thread. Zot secures more crowd control, but he is still low. It could still be a kill. Walrix gets swapped on health by Zot. The cooldowns have been burned through one by one as group therapy just try to stay in it and try and push Tempo Storm over. They need the tiniest bit more damage to close this series, but they're just not finding it. Yeah, Jamie has to dip out of line of sight to try to avoid these Chaos Bolts, but Walrix still there. Lands another one on Jamie. A little bit of the damage was reduced by that Iron Bark, but now that that's faded, Jamie oh! all out into the Cap Sun. Still just trying to run for his life. Shrink is out of nothing. Ask the spells and else. in the meantime, getting low as well. Notice version available. No void shift. Lonejar can't even keep him alive. They're I both can't believe it. Both teams can't believe what is going on right now. Walrick still finds another Chaos Bolt on to Nixie. Asgroth almost completely tapped on mana. Lontar, no mana left, and anyone could fall. At this point, it's anyone's match. Zot might just go down. There's Chaos Bolts on Nixie. Either player could. Zot just going to go for the kill. There's nothing left. Is he going to get it? Yes, he gets it. Zot holds on. Asgroth is feared up. Jamie silenced. They don't have enough damage, I don't think, but maybe they do. He's out of mana. 20 seconds until dispersion. Z the lightning lasso. Is it going to be enough? Zot, a nice vampiric embrace. He's going to heal himself just a tad bit, and Zot manages to clean it up here right at the end of this match. Tempo Storm put it down to the wire, but they're going home. Walrix is back. Is tonight going to be one of those games? Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for Azeroth.